Moving It in Church and our online family and friends, thank God for bringing us together one more time. God is calling us to live a holy life, a life that is set apart. He is calling us to be obedient. He wants to be first in our lives. Will we allow him to rule our lives today? Our scripture is 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16, and it is entitled, A Call to Holy Living. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. God wants us to live a holy life set apart from this world. Our song says, come let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him honor, give him the praise. Come let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise.
just worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give me the honor. Give me the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Him. Give my God the praise. Worship Him. Worship Him. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for you are good and you are God. We thank you for another opportunity, Father God, just to call on you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do, all that you have done, and what you're doing right now. God, we thank you for another Sunday morning service, a chance, an opportunity to come before you, Father God, and praise your name for who you are. Lord, you are the God, the magnificent God. You're the one who blesses us and keep us, and we thank you now. We ask you to bless us as we come today to study your word, that your word will fall on good soil. I ask you to rescue me from me, hide me behind Jesus, that he will stand, preach, and teach your word, that old habits will be rolled away, old burdens will be thrown away, and that we will be better, Father God, than we were this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray that you keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. Again, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church at our remote location. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. We'll be looking at Proverbs chapter 8 this morning, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs, the chapter is 8, the verses are 1 through 5. Last week, we talked about the Father's witness, the Father's wisdom, the Father's wisdom on last week. And so we want to continue this week in the vein of wisdom. Amen. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs. The chapter is 8. The verses are 1 through 5. We want to look at that this morning. Thank those who are joining us by Zoom. Thank you for joining us by Facebook Live. We appreciate you joining us at our virtual service here at our remote location. Amen. Thank you so much. Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. When you found it, you will discover these words. <clears throat> Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high mountain or the high hill, beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates, at lie ent and at the entrance at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors, to you, O oh man, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O oh, you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools be of an understanding heart. I want to talk about the, the shout of wisdom. The shout, the shout of wisdom. We find ourselves, as we have many months, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of an epidemic, meaning that not only do we have a medical issue, a problem, a health concern on U.S. soil, but the fact that it is a pandemic, we also have trouble, health concerns on a global level. Mm -hmm. It means to us today that we have health concerns, not just in Houston, not just in Texas, not just in the United States of America, but we have health concerns throughout this whole world. Let me tell you, God, as I said on Wednesday, as I said on previous Sundays, God has our attention, I hope. The old question is asked by 
uh, Verizon, do you hear me now? I want to say to you and ask you the same question. First of all, we ought to hear God now. Secondly, God wants to know, do you hear me now? Because not only is this pandemic affecting us, it's affecting people throughout the whole world. We find ourselves rushing to get food before everybody else gets there. We find ourselves concealed in houses where our friends are outside of the doors. We find ourselves in a situation where money has no place and our prestige cannot stand. We find ourselves in a situation today where, where we need wisdom as to how to operate in these terrible times. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. We need the skill. Wisdom is that skill in how to go about using the knowledge we have. I tell you today, we need wisdom. The Center for D Disease and Control says that we ought to protect ourselves. We ought to look out for our fellow man. We have to look out for the elderly and those who are sick. We have to make sure that we protect not just ourselves, but everybody else. The Center for Disease Control says in order for us to protect ourselves, we have to mask up, use facial coverings when we go around people we don't live with. We have to make sure that we cover our face, our mouths, and our nose, so much so that we won't spew on others and others won't be spewed on by us. We have to mask up. Mm -hmm. The CDC says that we not only have to mask up, but we have to maintain our distance from other people. I know, especially in the church, you're used to hugging, you're used to greeting, you're used to embracing one another. But for the sake of flattening the curve, Amen. for the sake of, of decreasing the amount of hospitalizations, for the sake of decreasing the amount of deaths, we have to distance ourselves one from the other. The CDC says we must wash our hands regularly. We must keep ourselves clean in the wake of this virus and in the present of this present day trauma. Mm -hmm. The CDC says we have to wash our hands often and we have to wash them a longer period of time than normal. Now, there are some who are protesting against these measures. They're upset. They're saying that there's a violation of human rights and a violation of their constitutional rights. I say to you today, we need to operate in wisdom. Amen. There are others who find themselves super spiritual at this time. They have come to the conclusion that if they're going to trust God through this pandemic and they're going to do what they want to do the way they want to do it as they have always done it. Mm -hmm. I say to you, just because you're super spiritual, you need to understand you must operate in wisdom. Yes. And in order to operate during this period in wisdom, we must understand that we must use face covering. We must mask up. We must keep our distances away from other people. And many times we have to keep our distance away from our very own friends and family. Not only that, we must wash our hands, use, use hand sanitizer on a regular basis. When we do these things, we have worldly wisdom that can keep us possibly alive. Now, worldly wisdom is that wisdom that will keep us walking on planet Earth and will keep us alive during this pandemic. Such it is in the text. <laughs> the text declares that we need to make sure we hear from wisdom. We need to act because of wisdom. 
And we need to handle things through a wise conversation and a wise lifestyle. The text declares that wisdom is shouting in the street. Wisdom is calling our name. Wisdom is how to use the knowledge and the intellect that we have. Let me tell you, you can have degrees on the wall and not have wisdom. You can have graduations from several universities and not have wisdom. You can be an A-B honor roll student and not have wisdom. Let me just tell you, wisdom doesn't come from academia. Wisdom does not come from professors in school. Wisdom come in three forms. First of all, James chapter 1 verse 5 declares that if any man lacks wisdom, he need to ask it of God and God will give him wisdom. He will give him liberally. He will give you wisdom without holding it back. James 1 and 5 says that if you lack wisdom, you ought to always, always ask that of God. God, give me wisdom. God, teach me how to handle a situation. God, teach me how to go about my day-to-day -day functions. Solomon was asked, what did he want? He said, God, give me wisdom on how to go in and out before the people because when God gave him wisdom, he was able to get rich because of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So if you want wisdom, you need to ask God of wisdom. The second way, the second way that, that one can gain wisdom is to hang out with people who have wisdom. Proverbs 13 and 20 says, walk with wise men in order that you may become wise. You need to make sure that you situate yourself, you position yourself in a position where people are making wise decisions. So much so until those decisions will become a part of your lifestyle. As a young boy, I used to sit under an oak tree on Slim Street with a 78-year-old man and an 80-year-old woman. Right there on Slim Street in Indianola, Mississippi, I would sit under that tree as a young boy and listen to those who had wisdom, those who were wise. I was young, they were old, they had been some places and done some things that I would never do or never have done, but just sitting there gave me some wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 20, walk with men that are wise. Walk with women who are wise. Walk with those who are accomplishing some things that you know that you need to accomplish. Walk with those who have lived through some things. Walk with those who have gone through some things in order for you to acquire wisdom. The third way, the third way to acquire wisdom is that you need to make sure you read the book of Proverbs on a regular basis. I suggest to our youth in our church and youth uh, that I deal with on a regular basis, I say to them that if you want to really be wise, take the book of Proverbs every month and read through the book of Proverbs. When that month is over, start over and read through the book of Proverbs again. Do that for one solid year and you will gain wisdom. Because the word of God says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 1, that wisdom is found in the Proverbs. So here you have it. You have three ways that you can gain wisdom. Number one, you can ask God for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And God will give you wisdom on how to handle things. You see, you need to make sure that you handle things in a godly way so that God will be able to bless you in the midst of all that's going on around you. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you need to hang out with people who have wisdom. Mm -hmm. Some of your friends you can't hang out with because they don't do wise things. They, they make bad decisions. You see, wisdom, wisdom is good, common, sound, everyday sense. Carrying yourself in a wise way, carrying yourself in a way that you have great results. And finally, you need to read Proverbs so you can get some wisdom. Wisdom is not guessing. Wisdom is not fortune telling. Wisdom is not emotions. 
Wisdom is a skill to use the knowledge that you already have and skill to use knowledge that you will gain. You need to walk in wisdom. Those who walk in wisdom are blessed of God. Those who walk according to emotions are headed down a, a dead-end street. Mm -hmm. The proverb writer compares the wisdom of the world to the wisdom of God, and the wisdom of God gives us life and life abundantly. Yes. The proverb writer compares wisdom and personifies wisdom as a woman says that wisdom is shouting in the street. It says, verse number one of chapter eight, it says, does not wisdom cry out? Wisdom is screaming. Wisdom is yelling. Wisdom is hollering, trying to find somebody that she can impress upon their lives. See, wisdom, wisdom is crying in the street, wisdom is crying everywhere we go. Wisdom is available to us. We have to stop and take time to see wisdom, to acknowledge wisdom, to walk with wisdom, and be blessed by wisdom. This word wisdom is personified. It says that this woman called wisdom is crying in the street. She's, she's hollering out at you. She's screaming at you, calling your name. Wisdom is calling your name and understanding lift up her voice. Understanding your, your intellect, understanding your intelligence is lifting her voice. Let me just say to you today, you can have a lot of knowledge, but you have not wisdom. You're headed down the wrong way of a dead end street. Mm -hmm. Verse number two, it says, wisdom takes her stand on the top of the hill. Wisdom is in high places. Wisdom is, is on the hilltop calling for you, streaming for you, hollering for you, yelling for you. Wisdom is calling for you. And wisdom is not hidden. Yes. Wisdom is not something you got to go dig up. Wisdom is appearing to you on a regular basis from up high where you can see her. Wisdom is looking down at you. Wisdom is on the top of the hilltop looking down at you saying, please stop by and take a dose of me. I am wisdom. Yes, sir. Young boy, young girl, we, we live in some terrible times. We, we are challenged with some times we've never been challenged with before but we need to walk in wisdom. In the midst of all that's going on around us, we are encouraged to mask up, mask up. Yes, sir. People are complaining. People are suing. People are going to court because judges and mayors all over the world is telling them they need to wear a mask. Yes. When you wear a mask, you say it's quite a bit about yourself. First of all, you say you care enough about yourself not to bring in particles that are detrimental to your health. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you say, about, you, you say something about yourself. Secondly, because you're saying to other people, I care enough about you to make sure that if I'm asymptomatic, I will not give you what I have. Yes. Thirdly, you're saying to, to wisdom, you're saying by way of wisdom when you mask up. Thirdly, what you're saying, you're saying is that I believe in you. I, I love you. I, I love you as I love myself, and I'm going to stand with you. It doesn't take much to wear a mask. You just have to be wise. Yes. But there was a time that I thought, and I, and I said publicly that, that masks may not protect us if it, is is it, if it is respiratory. It may not protect us simply because if you're able to breathe in and breathe out. But now there's new information that has come out. Mm -hmm. And as we gather in new information, we have to listen to the science. Yes. If we're going to be wise, we have to listen to those who are educated. If we're going to be wise, we have to listen to those who have walked this walk before with other diseases. Why are you talking about that, preacher? Because wisdom is standing on, on a high hill. Wisdom is, is standing on a high mountaintop when screaming and hollering and saying to you, come and take a dose of me. 
Verse number two, wisdom is beside the way where the path meet. Wisdom is at every intersection. This word, the way, means the intersection. Wisdom is at every intersection, and wisdom is saying make the right choices and the right decisions at the right time. Every time a boy goes out the house or a girl leaves the house, wisdom is saying, take me with you. It's at every intersection, every time you come to a place where you have to make a decision, where you have more than one option, wisdom is present with you. I made some foolish decisions in my life. And I hate those decisions that I made right today. It's because I did not use wisdom. When you use wisdom, you will make the right decision every time. When you walk with the Lord, the Lord can show you how to carry yourself and what to do with yourself in a split second of a situation. I remember, I remember finding myself in a bad situation. I had to decide whether I was going to keep my mouth closed or speak up and speak out at the wrong time. Wisdom kicked in. I kept my mouth closed. And I'm able to see you today and I'm able to testify of God's goodness today. Too often we find ourselves macho. Too often we find ourselves giving in so other people will be impressed. The Bible says, while you are there trying to make a decision, wisdom is at every intersection. And because wisdom is at every intersection, wisdom is saying, wait a minute, don't do it that way, do it this way. The Bible says, beside the way, beside every intersection, besides Every situation there is, there is wisdom. Every decision you have to make, God is able to speak to you. If you're saved, God is, is waiting to speak to you. If you're born again, God is trying to tell you something. He's trying to give you wisdom in the midst of your situations. If you're not saved, if you're not born again, God is trying to speak to you and tell you the time is now. This is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. This is an opportunity to have wisdom. This is a chance for wisdom to become real in your life. It says in verse number two, beside the way where the path meets, at every intersection, there is wisdom. At every intersection, there's wisdom. At at every crossroad, there's wisdom. Whenever there's a decision, there's wisdom. Then in verse 3, he says, Wisdom cries out in the gate at the entry of the city. Wisdom cries out at the gate at the entry of the city. What he's saying here is, in the business place, wisdom is crying out. At the entrance of the city, in the courtyard, wisdom is crying out. You need to make the decision and you need to make a decision right now. Don't just jump into your decision. Wait and hear from wisdom. That's why we have to, have to saturate ourselves with wisdom. We have to walk with men who have wisdom. We have to ask God to give us wisdom. We have to pray the Proverbs as God can give us wisdom and read the Proverbs and study the Proverbs because these are the three ways that God will give us wisdom. Don't hang out with the wrong people just because they are your family members or they're your friends. Hang out with people who have done some great things or doing some great things, people who are operating in wisdom, who are operating wisely. This word wisdom means that God has, has blessed us to operate in a wise way. Verse, verse number, number three says, at the entrance of the door. That means that wherever people come, wherever people goes in, wisdom is there. Mm -hmm. The one, when you read Proverbs chapter seven, you find a woman looking for a boy. He's a simple boy. He, he's, 
he, he's not very educated in, in, in the anatomy of the woman. The Bible says in, in, in Proverbs 7 that the, 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 the wise writer is looking out of the window and he sees a young man void of understanding. And the Bible says, and the woman seduces him and calls him to her side. In, in Proverbs 7, it says that this woman seduces him by telling him that I have laid my bed out for you. I have tapestry for you. My husband has gone on a far journey, and, and you, need, you need to just come on in to my place. Reminds me of Teddy Pendergrass's song says, come on over to my place. He needed to exercise wisdom because the Bible declares that this woman has caused many great men to fail and has caused the death of many great men. Mm -hmm. I say to you, my brothers and my sisters, wisdom is at the crossroads. Right. Wisdom is on a high hill. And not only that, wisdom is at the entry to every business place. And finally, wisdom is at every entrance where people gather and get together. We need to make sure that we operate in wisdom. Mm -hmm. Verse number four says, to you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Here we find wisdom calling from one generation to the other. You see, wisdom never goes out of style. Chick jeans came in style and they went out of style. 501s came in style and they went out of style. CB craze where everybody, including me, would get on the CB and say, Breaker 19, this is a Cal Cole kid tuning in from Indianola, Mississippi, right down Highway 49. Can you hear me now? The CB craze went in and the CB craze went out. But wisdom has no expiration date. Wisdom does not stop at, at the millennium generation. Wisdom did not fail us when the baby boomers were teenagers. Wisdom is passed on from one generation to the other. The text declares in verse number two that wisdom is not only passed to us who are men, it is passed on to the sons and the daughters of men. God bless our young people. God bless our young people as they march and we ought to as they do things to, to gain attention. They ought to, but we have to do it with wisdom. Mm -hmm. We have to do it in such a way that God will be pleased with us. I said to you that wisdom is not guessing. Wisdom is not fortune telling. Wisdom is, is not emotions. Wisdom is making a decision at a given time that will benefit you and benefit those who you come in contact with. You see, if we don't mask up, if we don't obey the, the science, not only can we be infected, we can affect our loved ones. So we have to operate in wisdom. The text says in verse number four that wisdom is passed from one generation to the other, from men to the sons of men, from women to the daughters of women. In every generation, wisdom is shouting out unto you. You don't have to be a fool because you're young. You don't have to act crazy because you're young. You don't have to act like you have no sense or have no home training because you're young. Wisdom is delivered and wisdom is crying out for you also. We have to abide in wisdom. Verse number five, and I'll leave you alone. Oh, you simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools, be of an understanding heart. It says to us, those who are simple, those, this word simple means naive. Oh, you naive ones. This word simple means those who are untaught, those who know no better, 
those who don't know any better, what you do is make sure, very sure, that you seek out wisdom. Those who are those who are those who are simple, make sure that that you seek wisdom in such a way that wisdom can be be a blessing to you. You see, today we're dealing with where wisdom is, where wisdom is located, where ris wisdom resides, where wisdom visits. Next week, we're going to de deal with the blessings of having wisdom. Mm -hmm. I just want to let you know that wisdom is shouting out. It is not wise for us to have church at 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas, 77048, USA at this time. Mm -hmm. it, is not, it is not wise for us to gather in a room where the temptation is present for us to embrace each other and love and show love toward each other like we normally do. It is wise for us to take the words of Isaiah 26 and 20. Go into your house and lock the door until the calamity passes over, mm -hmm. until the deaf angel leaves. Mm -hmm. It is wise for us to be wise and be obedient to those who have the science. Mm -hmm. Three things I want to leave with you that I picked out from this text. We have to be, even the simple ones have to be clever. This word prudence means cleverness. You have to be clever. You, 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 you have to be one who is wise enough to walk with God. Then he says, and you fools. The fools are those who are godless. The Bible says that you can tell when a man is a fool when he fears not God. Mm -hmm. Fools say stuff like this. I've done more for Christianity than Jesus himself. That's when you can tell that a man is a fool. Fools say stuff like this. I've done more for black people than any other president. That's when you can tell when a man's a fool. Fools say stuff like this. Well, you know, there are some good people on every side. That's how you can tell that a man is a fool. We ought to pray for fools. Because fools do not have God in their heart. And fools do not fear the Lord or reverence the Lord. And you fools, be of an understanding heart. These, these, these fools need to, let me lift three things for you and I'll leave you alone. First of all, if we're going to operate in wisdom, we need to have faith. Operation in wisdom is to have faith in the almighty God. Have faith that God is wise enough to tell us what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. First thing you need to do is have faith, meaning you need to believe God for who he is. The second thing you need to do is have fervor. Fervor meaning heat. Fervor meaning that you ought to have compassion and be intense about who God is. If you're going to have godly wisdom, you need to have compassion for other people and, have, and be passionate for God. You got to be passionate for God. You ought not let anything keep you from getting to God. Mm -hmm. You ought not, you ought not let, you ought not, you ought not let, you ought not let the things of this world overshadow your godliness. Yes. You ought not let things around you get you out of step with the Lord. As we were meeting in church, as we've done for many years, for and as long as you know and as long as I know, we've been meeting in church. There have always been somebody, and it's used the same somebodies, who, who show up late because they're not passionate about meeting the Lord at the church house. I've learned, I've learned also that those same people that show up late at the church house, they show up late on the live, live broadcast also. Hmm. We have to have, we have to be passionate about the Lord. We have to, we have to be, we have to be on fire with the Lord. We have to make sure we have fervor and you don't have to be a member of the sanctified church to be on fire for the Lord. Yes. We ought to be on, on fire for the Lord regardless of where we are. And you don't have to be a part of the non-denominational church in order to be on fire for the Lord. And let me just drop this in your spirit. Even though the church is called non-denominational, it is a denomination in itself. 
You don't have to be a part of the label church of God or the label church of God in Christ or the label church of God because all of our churches ought to be the church of God. All of our churches ought to be the church of God in Christ. All of our churches ought to be the church of Christ because we walk with God. We ought to have some passion. We, we, we ought to be passionate about what we do. We, we are, and you can tell when a person is operating in wisdom, they are passionate about the Lord. Yes. They love the Lord. They don't let little stuff stop them from, from being obedient unto the Lord. They don't let pure pressure push them around when it comes to the Lord. Finally, when you operate in wisdom, you have the favor of God. You have God's favor. Favor is God's approval. Favor is God's support. Favor is when people look at you and wonder how things are happening around you, but they don't know that you have the favor of God. And when you have the favor of God, you are able to do things, go places, and act some ways that other people are not able to. You have the favor of God. You ought to walk. And, and when you have the favor of God, you ought to walk like you got his favor. You ought to act like you have his favor. When you have the favor of God, the favor of God ought to be something that people can see on you from a mile off. When we operate in wisdom, we have faith in God. Others can see our faith in God. In the midst of this pandemic, we ought to have faith in God. In the midst of situations around us, we have to have faith in God. Secondly, wisdom tells us to have, to have fervor, to be passionate, to be compassionate with people, but be passionate with God. We ought to be on fire for the Lord. We ought to be witnessing for people with people. And don't tell me you're still not going through the grocery store. You ought to be witnessing with your mask on at the grocery store. Amen. You ought to be witnesses on your telephone conversations. You ought to be telling men and women about the goodness of God himself. And thirdly, when you walk in wisdom, you have God's faith. You have upon your life the favor of God, the fog, the favor of God. You have in your life the favor of God. And favor sure isn't fair. And if you would allow me to say it like we said in the hood, favor ain't fair. And because favor is not fair, when you walk in wisdom, you have blessings upon blessings and we will talk about it next week. Blessings upon blessing that those who do not walk in wisdom do not have. Wisdom is shouting. Wisdom is crying. Wisdom is standing on the rooftop. Wisdom is standing in the high places. Wisdom is at every intersection. Wisdom is, is at every business meeting. Wisdom is at every court room setting. Wisdom is at the entrance of every place you go to. Listen, wisdom is calling. Amen. There may be somebody here with us today who, who don't know this wisdom that I'm talking about. Wisdom is Jesus. Amen. It was wisdom, Jesus. Jesus. You see, they did some things to wisdom. <laughs> wisdom came through 42 generations. Wisdom got off in a place called Bethlehem of, of Judea. Wisdom was, treat, was mistreated by mean men. Wisdom, Jesus the Christ, they killed him. They hung him. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. They laid wisdom in a borrowed tomb. It was wisdom, Jesus the Christ. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. Early that third day morning, wisdom got up. And he got up with all power. All power in heaven and earth. Wisdom got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. You can have that same wisdom today. Yes. Jesus the Christ, wisdom is, is able to guarantee you a place in heaven. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to come to Jesus. He is wisdom. 
that if you want to be known as a wise person before God, you would have just said, accept the wisdom of Jesus Christ. This godly wisdom is crying out for you. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Just come to Jesus. Just as you are. Wisdom is up high on the hilltops. Wisdom is at every intersection. And wisdom is in every business meeting. Wisdom is at every entry and entrance, entrance place. Wisdom is inside the door. Wisdom is outside of the door. Jesus is available to you regardless of where you are. Wisdom is available. Will you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior? The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know Jesus for yourself. It's not enough for mom and daddy to know wisdom. You need to know wisdom for yourself. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know Jesus by just inviting him into your life. Telling Jesus, Lord, I, I messed up. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you lived on this earth, really. I believe that you died an awful death on a hill called Calvary. I believe that when they took you off the cross, they laid you in a borrowed tomb. I believe that early that third day morning you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. I receive you as my savior and I need you to be my Lord. If you believe that story, that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, and seen by over 500 men at one time, if you can just believe that story, you can be saved right here, right now, where you are. The door of the church is open. If you just join me in prayer, I'll, I'll lead you to Christ and you'll be a part of this family. God is blessing you and he's blessed you to hear this message. So much so until he wants you to be saved, be born again. Just bow your head with me and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. We believe that if you prayed that prayer with all sincerity, we believe that Jesus is now a part of your life and you're born again. You're on your way to heaven. We believe that you now are among the body of Christ. You are now saved. And there may be some of you who, who need prayer. You can inbox me and let me know that you need prayer and, and we'll be praying with you and praying for you. If you need a church home, I recommend this one where Jesus is the center of attention and Jesus is the main attraction. The door of the church is open where you can join the New Beginning Church and be a part of our church. Where Jesus is steering the ship, where Jesus is keeping us and blessing us. Please come and be a part of the New Beginning Church. So if you have received him today, let me know by inboxing me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ as your Savior. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Thank you for being with us today. It is offering time. It is offering time. It is time to give unto the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give unto the Lord. You can give 
in three ways now. You can give unto the Lord in three ways. Two of them are on the slide that you're looking at. But you can give in three ways. First of all, you can give by a cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. You can give by that way. Your tithes, offering, and your official gifts to the Lord. The sacrificial gifts. Or you can mail your offering in or your tithes in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. The third way you can give by way of Zelle, Zelle, many of you are a part of Zelle through major banks. You can give to Zelle by the email lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to give by way of Zelle, you can do so by lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school class. Our youth and our young people are having Sunday school by way of Kahoot. If your youth is not a part of it, please look up Sister Davis and get a part of Kahoot and uh, be a part of this service for young people and for children at 9 a.m. on Sunday. We have our adult Sunday school. We have our adult Sunday school at 9 a.m every Sunday. Also at 1045 a.m. every Sunday worship service, this service that you are now attending, 1045 a.m. by, by virtual uh, presentation, we have our worship service at 1045 a.m. So thank you so much for joining us. And also you can come and have Bible study with us, the same channels, at 720 p.m., a Bible study here on Facebook Live as well as Zoom. Thank you so much for, for joining us. That is Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. on Wednesday night for our, our Bible study. Amen. Again, thank you so much for being a part of our service. We've enjoyed having you. Thank you for tuning in. We're praying God's best blessing upon you. We're praying that God continue to walk with you, continue to be a part of your life and continue to, to give you favor as you walk in faith and as you continue to walk in fervor. Be on fire for the Lord. And be excited for what God has done. If God has given you another chance, he, and he is, he has, if God has given you another chance, glorify him and bless his name and thank him for, for what he has done. Please feel free to come and celebrate with us at these times that have been mentioned. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for blessing us in ministry, blessing us in service. We ask you to continue to bless us, Father God, in these tough times. Bless the new beginning members, visitors, those who watch, keep them medically safe, keep them spiritually safe, keep them physically safe. Bless them financially, Lord, that they will have no want and no need. Bless them, Father God, that they will grow spiritually in such a way that the pettiness of this world will not affect them. We ask you, Father God, to bless our nation and bless this world. Bless the leadership. We ask you to continue to bless us. 
Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I'm going to ask my bride to come over here. I'm going to ask my bride to come right before you leave. Uh, this is my bride of 20 years come July 1st. If the Lord spares, we will be married 20 years, and she's just glad to be a Davis. She just, <laughs> she just happy to be a Davis. We're just glad to have her in our family. She will be my bride for 20 years. Wow. Uh, now, Or is a Davis, <laughs> and she's glad to be a Davis, and we're glad to have an Or on our team. Thank you so much, honey, for, for being a part of our service. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service, and thank you for for all that you do. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. I'm going to start with